I don't know if you caught up with the recently completed World Athletics Championships in Eugene, Oregon. There was a 22-year-old American, Sydney McLaughlin. She's written herself into a remarkable history. She was in 2016 one of the youngest athletes ever to qualify for the US Olympic team at the age of 16. In Eugene, they ran the final of the women's 400 metres flat, that's the women's 400 metres on the track, not long before the final of Sydney McLaughlin's 400 metres hurdles. These are world titles. In the women's 400 metres final, the seventh place getter in a field of eight ran 50.78, quick, 50.78. But with 10 hurdles in front of her in the women's 400 metre hurdles, Sydney McLaughlin ran 50.68 seconds, a world record, almost two seconds faster than the girl who came second, who is the third fastest 400 metre hurdler in history. She ran a ridiculously quick 52.27, but Sydney McLaughlin's 50.68 must rank as one of the greatest sporting achievements in the history of any sport. Well, that of course is good news. Meanwhile, the Commonwealth Games run in Birmingham. And I have to say, while it isn't a world-class competition, Australia's being tickled up in the swimming. We certainly haven't had it all our own way, except in the relays, of course, where our depth favours, favours us. But as an Australian, I find it immensely disturbing to witness this pile-on towards the gifted Australian 24-year-old Kyle Chalmers. At 18 years of age, the breathtaking gold medal winner in the Rio Olympics 100 metre freestyle. In 2018 at the Commonwealth Games, on the Gold Coast he won gold in the 200 freestyle. In Tokyo he won silver in the 100 freestyle. This is a transparently gifted and decent man. He'd previously been in a relationship with Emma McKeon, who's now written her name into the history books as the most successful athlete in Commonwealth Games history, having won her 11th gold medal last night in Birmingham in the 50 metres freestyle. And she's not finished yet, she'll win more than that. But in what has disturbed a lot of lovers of sport, the focus has not been on performance and achievements, even Olympic champions, but on a 25 year old Queenslander, Cody Simpson, variously referred to as a pop star. I think I gave Cody Simpson his first ever interview when he was very young. He went to America, had some singing success. He was always, as a schoolboy, a brilliant talent, but as a swimmer, he is not world-class, though his comeback into the pool has been most notable. Kyle Chalmers was in a relationship with Emma McKeon. The detail I don't know, and nor are we entitled to know. But this modest and achieving lady has now hooked up with Cody Simpson. That should be nobody's business. But somehow or other, in all of this, Kyle Chalmers is the villain, to the point where he has conducted interviews when all he's asked about are questions related to the so-called love triangle. I saw him interviewed last night by the former champion Kate Campbell. Both were outstanding. But to see Kyle Chalmers, a virtual broken young man, over all of this attention for the wrong reasons, certainly calls into question the principles of journalism. For whatever reason, Kyle Chalmers feels piled on. He's a magnificent Olympic champion that Cody Simpson will never be. He shouldn't be discussed in the same breath, except that Cody Simpson has linked up with his former girlfriend. That should have nothing to do with Kyle Chalmers, nor should he be expected to be jumping up and down at the pool in relation to the former love of his life, Emma McKeon. These are young people. They're human beings before they're swimmers. The media focus here has been appalling. Kyle Chalmers deserves to be treated as the champion he is, and Cody Simpson on pool deck should be treated as just another swimmer until his achievements in the pool entitle him to something better. They're giving out gold medals in Birmingham. None to those journalists who've pursued Kyle Chalmers with idiotic and unworthy questioning.